Hey everybody, how's it going? Um, I'm here today to talk to you about my sleeping setup for the Indian Pacific Wheel Race and general sleep setups for bike packing at all. Um, so before I get started, I just want to talk about kind of the brief, uh, what I need for the crossing of Australia in March. It's sort of a little bit after Australian summer, but you can still get a huge temperature range. So you're out on the Nullarbor, which is basically a desert. Uh, you can have really hot days over there, you know, mid 30 degrees, high 30 degrees. If you're American, that's around 100 or more, but it gets really cold at night. Like the average temperature at night is about 10 degrees Celsius. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. Um, so that's just one chunk of the race. And then later on, we're going through the Victorian Alps. We're going over Falls Creek. We're going through the Kosciuszko National Park. And it can be, you know, just baking hot and freezing cold, you know, day to day. Um, and at night it's the same thing like the temperature can drop it can you know be kind of warm but uh, Yeah, I have to really consider a huge range of temperature. So Yeah, this is my setup um, There are more hardcore ways you can do it I know that you know the people who tend to win these races have like really hardcore setups But you know for me a little bit extra weight um, For a good night's sleep is fine um, fine I am always going to want to stay in a motel where possible. If not, a good comfortable uh, setup is good. So, let's get started. So, the first thing, the Climate Static V2. I will link to all of these things in the description down below. This is my mattress. Uh, pretty small, pretty compact, weighs in at about 485 grams. Now, it is inflatable. So, the idea is that I take it out of its packet, roll it out and blow it up and I'm gonna do that I'm gonna do it but I'm gonna speed it up so you don't have to watch a man blow up a mattress in real time on the internet that's ain't nobody got time for that okay a couple minutes later I am really lightheaded but this thing is inflated have a look at this that sort of thickness good cushion of air going on here check that out nice nice so that is the mattress check that down there and now it is time for the star of the show, the Katmandu Bivy XT bag. Now this thing, I've just chucked it up on the scales, 780 grams, and I have a silk liner in here. So yeah, 780 grams for the Bivy bag itself. I actually started, the first thing I bought was this Soul Escape Bivy. I basically went and looked at what Jesse Carlson uses and went, I'll have what Carlson has. And then I got it and I kind of went, I want more than what Jesse Carlson has, so never even unrolled it. This, this is the bivy for me. It is rated for alpine conditions, so they say, so it's gonna be pretty bloody cold, potentially. And yeah, this is it. 780 grams, plus the mattress. You know, you're only looking at a little bit over one kilo for basically the whole setup. So I'll roll this out and I'll show you what it does. So here it is all rolled out on the ground. As you can see, it is very, very orange. And yeah, there's not a lot to it, but it has a couple of little features that I really liked. The first is this thing here, which is just, just a fly rope. So say you chuck it under a tree or something, you can tie that to the tree and have the thing not resting directly on your face, which is in there. So that is a nice handy little feature. And speaking of my face, you can actually, and this is one of the things that attracted me to this bivy, is that you can unzip and have a mesh immediately above your face. If you talk to people who have spent time in bivvies, one of the biggest problems is that you wake up wet because you're breathing in them, that condenses, and you just end up stewing in your own disgusting breath. Um, so yeah, I can unzip this and have a nice little airflow. Also, I can keep animals out because this thing is fully zippered up and nothing can get in, hopefully, unless it's really, 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 really tiny. Yes, I am concerned about things like snakes trying to get in with me. So bear with me a moment, I will crack it open. So this is it unzipped, uh, plenty of room to get in and out. And this little orange fella here is a silk liner uh, that I bought from Kathmandu as well. And silk is very good because it's a, a good insulator. It gives you good warmth. And it's also really, 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 really small. Um, and yes, I've just forgotten one thing. Bear with me. All right, now this guy here is just a, an emergency space blanket. So 
Um, again, it's just a really small item, but these things are crazy warm and they don't take up much space. So well, basically what I'll do is just fold it out and, and put it in here and then just roll it all up together. So yeah, that means I should have a pretty good range of temperatures covered for from, you know, pretty hot all the way down to very, very, very cold with a liner, the emergency bag and just the bivy itself. So yeah. There you go. I haven't actually used this out on the road yet because I don't want to. I only want to have to use it. Um, so I can't really report exactly how it's performed so far, but that is my setup. I will let you know how this goes at the other end of the race when I've had some horrible nights uh, to sleep in it. So there it is, my sleeping setup for the Indian Pacific wheel race. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you've done. You know, the great thing about bikepacking is that everybody has their own take, everybody has their own gear. Yeah, leave me a comment with any questions. Thanks for watching. See you next time.